In his youth, Xi Jinping faced ridicule, recounting an incident where he was sprayed with dung. The ventilation duct was blocked, and when it was finally cleared, I was sprayed with dung all over my face. At age 70, Xi Jinping continues to provoke the Chinese people, disregarding the country's economic challenges during the 2024 New Year's gathering, claiming, looking globally, the scenery is still favorable here. In his youth, Xi Jinping confidently boasted of impossible feats. He once claimed, I used to carry 200 caddies of wheat on a 10 li mountain road and never switch shoulders. Now 70 years old, Xi Jinping makes gaffes about the deliciousness of baozi, steamed buns, seemingly unaware that netizens have dubbed him with that nickname, which has become a widely known joke across China. Xi Jinping has marked many firsts. He is the first Chinese Communist Party leader with the most teasing nicknames in history, the leader who amassed the most wealth through so-called royalties, and the first leader since the founding of the People's Republic of China, whom almost everyone, domestically and internationally, rich and poor, unanimously wish to see ousted. He also holds the dubious distinction of causing the greatest economic losses to the nation. He is seen as the leader most likely to bring about catastrophic disasters to China. He appears simple-minded but is profoundly cunning, a descendant of the CCP's enlightened faction, yet a practitioner of authoritarian totalitarianism. Though his father suffered during the Cultural Revolution, Xi Jinping harbors deep affection for that era. His complex persona makes him a specimen for study of the CCP's evil nature, Chinese Machiavellianism, and even the cycles of Chinese history. To fully comprehend Xi Jinping's complex character, we must start from the beginning. Now, as the world watches Xi Jinping standing atop a military vehicle during a parade, who would recall his past of being bullied? Yuan Hongbing, a Chinese legal scholar and dissident, once recounted moments of drinking with Xi Jinping when he was a young official in Fujian. According to Yuan Hongbing, one evening in Beijing, a drunk Xi Jinping indecently slapped a female waitress on the rear. This angered the kitchen staff, who rushed over to defend her. Xi Jinping, in a burst of anger, overturned the table and fled in embarrassment into the night. This incident reveals Xi Jinping's thuggish nature. Such arbitrary behavior is a recurring theme in Xi Jinping's governance as the top leader. Perhaps it stems from a sense of superiority ingrained in the CCP elite. Xi Jinping's father, Xu Zhongxun, was once the vice premier of the People's Republic of China and was politically purged before the Cultural Revolution in 1962. Despite the hardships endured by the Xi family during the Cultural Revolution, experts such as Song Yongyi believe that Xi Jinping gained more benefits than harm during that period, explaining his sentimentality toward it. Xi Jinping attended the 8th Route Army School during the early stages of the Cultural Revolution. That school was mainly attended by children of military cadres. In such an environment of privilege, Xi Jinping's father held a high position, fostering a sense of superiority in Xi Jinping's mind. Many years later, when Xi Jinping ascended to the top leadership position, he still frequently mentioned red bloodlines and red territory, indicating a deeply ingrained belief in his own exceptionalism as the successor of communism. What did Xi Jinping gain from the Cultural Revolution? According to Song Yongyi, shortly after the start of the Cultural Revolution, Xi Jinping was sent to the countryside where he became the village party branch secretary, and soon after, he was recommended to Tsinghua University under the label of worker-peasant soldier. Given Xi Jinping's academic qualifications, it would have been impossible for him to enter Tsinghua University through normal means. After entering Tsinghua, Xi Jinping's life took a dramatic turn for the better. Those familiar with the history of the Cultural Revolution know that the youth of that era spent their formative years in struggle sessions and endless political movements instead of receiving a proper education. Despite obtaining a doctorate from Tsinghua University, Xi Jinping's lack of intellectual depth is evident. Due to repeated incidents of stumbling over words and making embarrassing mistakes while reading prepared scripts in public, Xi Jinping earned another nickname, PhD in primary school. During the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, Xi Jinping was unable to answer a question and instead slowly removed his translator, then frantically searched through his prepared notes on stage, prompting ridicule from the audience. This incident exemplifies Xi Jinping's inability to improvise and his reliance on prepared scripts, even in international settings. In another meeting, Putin openly mocked Xi Jinping, saying, 
<laughs> Let's call you Little Notebook from now on. <laughs> Another scene that went viral happened at the BRICS summit in South Africa on August 23, 2023. Xi Jinping's bodyguards deviated from the prescribed route, attempting to follow him into the venue, but were swiftly intercepted. He only turned to see what was happening after the gates had closed. Then he took a few steps, realizing his bodyguards were not around him, hesitated, and then repeatedly paused on the red carpet, looking towards the entrance, appearing bewildered. He didn't seem like the leader of a major nation, but more like a lost and panicked child. Xi Jinping's clumsy and foolish image has drawn global attention. During Deng Xiaoping's era, a group of so-called future fifth-generation leaders was secretly designated, with Xi Jinping and Bo Xilai both listed as key candidates. Xi Jinping's political career began to soar from there. Despite his mediocre abilities and lack of notable achievements during his tenures as as local officials in Shanxi, Fujian, Shanghai, etc., his rise was facilitated within the corrupt system of the CCP. Power does not come from votes, but from the bureaucratic system. In this system, mediocrity and obedience often prevail over competence. Xi Jinping's early impression was that of a simple and honest person. Coupled with his status as a son of a communist official and being designated as a future leader, his mediocrity actually helped his rise. After winning the favor of Jiang Zemin, the third-generation leader of the CCP, there was nothing to stop Xi Jinping from entering the central leadership. At that time, the only person who could threaten Xi Jinping's rise to power was his childhood friend Bo Xilai. Although also a son of communist leadership, Bo Xilai attended Beijing Number、no. Four High School, the best high school in China at that time. Bo Xilai never regarded Xi Jinping highly because he was a top student looking down on an average student. While Xi Jinping was cautious and low profile in his role as a local official, Bo Xilai's style in Liaoning and Chongqing was extremely flamboyant. The later events are well known. Bo Xilai couldn't escape the fate of being crushed in the CCP's internal power struggles. By the time Bo Xilai was imprisoned, Xi Jinping had cleared the last obstacle to his ascent to the top of the CCP. When Xi Jinping officially became the highest leader of the CCP and the country in 2012, he swiftly launched an anti-corruption campaign. Many, including Jiang Zemin's faction, who had supported his rise, hoped that as a descendant of the enlightened and reformist faction during China's economic prosperity, Xi Jinping might lead China into unprecedented new territory. However, almost everyone was proven wrong. This includes not only ordinary people, but also second-generation leaders who backed Xi Jinping's ascent, such as Jiang Zemin and Zheng Xinhong, as well as the third-generation leader who supported Xi Jinping's rule, Hu Jintao, and even the vested interest groups within the CCP who once supported Xi Jinping. Mao Zedong, the first-generation highest leader of the CCP, caused immense disasters to China during his lifetime. Yet Xi Jinping has been striving to emulate him since he took office. Although his personal prestige is far from that of Mao Zedong, Xi Jinping's centralized power even surpasses that of Mao Zedong's era. He has a persistent sense of mission, viewing the communist domain not only as the CCP's private property, but also as his family's private property. This has led to a situation where, while vigorously cracking down on corruption and purging other vested interest groups within the CCP, Xi Jinping has also legally engaged in corruption himself, allowing his family members to exploit their positions to enrich themselves without limit. Xi Jinping is the only CCP leader since the era of Deng Xiaoping to have vigorously published during his tenure and to promote himself. His four-part book set, Xi Jinping: The Governance of China. Is estimated to have earned him 558 million yuan in royalties, not including foreign language editions. The English, French, Russian, Arabic, Spanish, Portuguese, German, and Japanese editions of Xi's works have also brought him substantial royalties in foreign currencies. In 2016, Australian federal agents searched a private plane carrying gamblers at a seaside resort airport. They found a businessman accused of having ties to Chinese criminal gangs, and an Australian citizen named Ming Chai, who turned out to be Xi Jinping's cousin. Ming Chai was listed as a very, very important person in Crown Resorts Casino's internal documents. Records show that he spent twenty-eight million dollars over eighteen months, starting June 2012, and ranked among Crown Resorts' top fifty clients based on gambling turnover. The investigation into Ming Chai was part of a broader probe into organized crime, money laundering, and abuse of the Australian immigration system. 
This caused shock in the Australian political scene and raised concerns about national security. Recently, Australian writer Yang Hengjun was sentenced to death with a reprieve after five years of detention in China, possibly linked to the leak of the Ming Chai incident. There are others in the Xi family who have made a fortune using the royal connections. In 2009, Xi Jinping's sister Qi Chao and her husband Deng Jiagui controlled Beijing Qingchuan Dadi Investment Company Limited, which once invested 28.6 million dollars in Wanda Commercial Properties and later quietly transferred the shares for about 240 million dollars. They earned huge profits from that deal, a fact confirmed by Wanda Chairman Wang Jianlin during a lecture at Harvard University on October 29, 2015. Chinese media outlet Chai Xin previously reported on this, but relevant reports have since been scrubbed from its website. During the pandemic, there was an outcry over those who made a fortune from nucleic acid testing. One such example is Zhang Hezi, the controller of the company. Zhang Hezi's sister Zhang Lanlan is Xi Jinping's sister-in-law. Another nucleic acid testing company, Huada Gene Technology, was founded by Xi Jinping's brother-in-law Wu Long, the partner of Sinovac's COVID-19 vaccine. China National Pharmaceutical Group Corporation is operated by Xi Jinping's own brother, Xi Yuanping. This explains why Xi Jinping insisted on the zero COVID policy during the pandemic. Sealing people into their apartments in the name of safety was to ensure that the Xi family could profit from the pandemic. It is worth mentioning that Xi Jinping's sister Qi Chao Chao is a Canadian citizen, while his other sister Qian An and his younger brother Xi Yuanping are Australian citizens, and his daughter Xi Mingzhe is suspected to have obtained U.S. citizenship. All of the above are considered state secrets of the CCP, and it would be difficult for anyone to know without watching this video. In China's long history spanning thousands of years, there have been a total of 559 emperors. Perhaps Xi Jinping is striving to become the 560th. In 2022, during the highly anticipated 20th National Congress of the CCP, Xi Jinping broke the old rules of the CCP. He ordered the removal of former top leader Hu Jintao from the venue in front of everyone, and forcibly secured a third term in office in a manner that stunned the world, forming a central committee entirely composed of his cronies. It seems that he will be president for life. Since his second term, Xi Jinping has embarked on a series of aggressive actions, such as the China-U.S. trade war, wolf warrior diplomacy, zero COVID policy, and the return to planned economy that favors the state and punishes private business. These moves, including crackdowns on internet finance, educational and gaming sectors, intensified regulation of the real estate market, are scaring off foreign companies and investment. They have led to a rapid decline in the Chinese economy. The wealth accumulated over 40 years of reform and opening up has been squandered by the prodigal son. Not only ordinary people are harmed by his policies. CCP elites, who have been quietly making their fortunes since Jiang Zemin's era, are unhappy. Xi Jinping's harsh anti-corruption policies and actions that turn Hong Kong into a financial relic block their previous paths to wealth. Meanwhile, the shameless wealth accumulation fuels their anger. Even Xi's close associates, Foreign Minister Qin Gang, disappeared. Defense Minister Li Shangfu fell, and Rocket Force officials were wiped out. Wang Qishan, Fu Zhenghua, and Sun Li Jun, who aided Xi's rise, are sidelined or imprisoned. Premier Li Qiang, positioned as Xi's obedient secretary, is the weakest premier in history. Tai Qi risks losing his position as the general office director, yet he must continue playing the role despite peril. Every central leader is closely monitored, and those around Xi live in constant fear. Perhaps soon, she will realize his alienation from those around him. Legal expert Yuan Hongbing's assessment of Xi Jinping is particularly apt. Xi Jinping espouses the evil ideal of communism, which is the most terrifying. When this evil ideal is combined with the power to control the fate of 1.4 billion people, it becomes the source of disaster for humanity in the 21st century. What is the evil ideal of communism? It is the elimination of all private ownership and the destruction of existing civilized social systems. Yuan says this is a threat to all humanity, not just Chinese people. As a self-proclaimed communist ideologue, Xi Jinping clearly is not satisfied with a dictatorial regime like North Korea merely ruling within its own borders. Yuan Hongbing once revealed that during a drinking session, Xi Jinping made a shocking statement. He believed that China does not have too many people, but too few. 
If it had 4 billion people, it would be convenient to manage the entire world. These are not the boastful words of youth. He now has the opportunity to combine his arrogance and ignorance with dictatorial power. In recent years, Xi Jinping has been increasing military investment. The Belt and Road Initiative has been exposed by many countries as neo-colonialism. He advocates unlimited cooperation with the Putin government. He is the behind-the-scenes boss of the North Korean regime. He has led China to become the first country to recognize the Taliban regime, and he supports Hamas, a terrorist organization, on behalf of the CCP. On November 7, 2022, at the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau privately talked with Xi Jinping. But Xi Jinping showed an impatient look and adopted a high-handed manner, instructing Trudeau to act according to his wishes, otherwise it's, quote, hard to say. This completely lacks the diplomatic etiquette expected and resembles the tone of a mafia boss. It exposed Xi Jinping's attempt to replace cooperation and negotiation between countries with hegemony. Emperors and dictators often fret about threats to their rule. Xi Jinping's foreign visits involve booking entire hotels and replacing all items with goods from China, even down to teacups. He's paranoid even on home turf, avoiding overnight stays in Hong Kong and rushing back to a hotel in Shenzhen. The removal of the historic book Chongzhen, the diligent emperor of a declining dynasty, suggests that the CCP links it to Xi Jinping. Emperor Chongzhen's tragic end may haunt Xi Jinping. Under his rule, the CCP has abandoned the strategy of hiding strength and biding time, becoming aggressive and posing a threat to global peace. Xi Jinping's CCP goes against civilization and history's current. He's driving the CCP recklessly towards a cliff. Witnessing its collapse and Xi Jinping's inevitable fate seems imminent.